Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the weekend project. Uh, this is a project, a hands-on session, where we're gonna build a very, very interesting item. We are about to build real-time data archiving architecture on AWS that is essentially, anytime uh, uh, any entity essentially goes into Dynamo, whether it's uh, essentially create, update, or delete, we are gonna stream those event through Kinesis data stream, and then we are gonna fire Lambda function the Lambda functions are gonna process these data from the Dynamo. It's gonna normalize the data from Dynamo JSON to a standard JSON. Then it's gonna dump on the data like in the year, month, day format. And then we'll see how to query this data using Athena. And all of these happen near real time when I enter or delete record. Not only that, this project and lab also has infrastructure code. So everything is there. And as I said, the, this is not a beginner level lab. You need a little bit background on AWS. So let's get started with this video. All right, I'm excited to show you. Uh, again, the code is pretty big. Uh, and again, this is lab number 24. So uh, again, you should have all the code here. So do not do not worry about that. So let's go from top to bottom uh, and then I'll try my best to explain. Again, there's a lot of code that I need to explain. This is essentially declaring the serverless framework. Over here, I'm just declaring my stack as AWS, runtime, memory, timeout, architecture, and basically some tags. I'm using a .env. I will cover this part in a later, but I wanna cover these items that I have. The first thing that I need is an S3 bucket where I will dump my data. Basically, whenever Dynamo, whenever I insert or uh, update or delete anything, I want the data to go to the data lake. So I'm creating an S3 bucket using a resource object here. After that, uh, what I am doing is I'm creating a Kinesis data stream. I'm using an on-demand mode, and as you can see, uh, $env variable name means that uh, this value is essentially injected from this uh, particular env file. Don't worry, I'll delete all the keys, so not to worry about that. Again, there's a lot of code, so let's keep going. So this is, uh, I'm creating my Kinesis data stream. Now here is where I'm creating my DynamoDB table. I'm using it, uh, a resource object, I'm saying Dynamo table providing the name of the table and attribute primary and secondary key, whatever you guys have that. I'm defining my schema, range and hash key. Uh, this is on-demand mode, which means I am not specifying WCUs, RCUs. Uh, I'm using a standard class. Uh, Dynamo also has infrequent access. I'm using also PITR, which means point in time recovery, backups, right? I'm doing that. And if you observe, Kinesis stream specification is equal to get ATT is a uh, is a function which is gonna get the ARN after the Kinesis data stream has been created. Again, so what we are building is essentially, uh, if I had to show you here, we have this user, he's gonna insert the data into DynamoDB and we are essentially real-time streaming this data through Kinesis data stream. We are firing Lambda function and this Lambda is essentially going to the S3. All of that is happening real-time. And from here, we essentially have our Athena where our end user is gonna use ad hoc queries to query my data lake. And then you can build the dashboard using AWS QuickSight. That's the entire full on stack, okay? So here is our all infrastructure code. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I would go to the Lambda function on what I have done uh, in a second. So the first thing that happens in the Lambda function is I iterate over the Kinesis data record that I'm getting. I essentially take the payload, I decode the payload because the data that comes from the Kinesis data stream is encrypted and it's a base64 string. So I'm encoding, uh, sorry, I'm decoding the string and then I'm deserializing my string using uh, the load desk method. Once I have that, I'm checking the event name in the um, Kinesis payload, right? And I'm saying if the payload is insert or if the payload is removed, do something, right? So basically the CRUD operation. So as soon as, uh, let's say the payload is uh, insert, I essentially take the Dynamo object, Dynamo JSON, and I'm essentially, uh, if you observe, I'm just storing this in a variable called JSON data. At the end of my class or at the end of my function, I'm here saying JSON data if it is not none, which means if I was able to get the Dynamo JSON, I'm using an unmarshal, which is a function, which will basically uh, deserialize my Dynamo JSON to a regular JSON. Um, so that happens and then I'm adding certain meta fields, for example, region, event ID, event name, and event source. And at the end, what I'm doing here is I'm creating my data lake, year, month, day format, and finally I'm inserting the data into the data lake and I'm also printing it. That is basically the Lambda. Again, uh, 
uh, now I'm gonna show you by deploying the entire stack. So I'm saying SLS deploy. This will deploy my entire stack, including DynamoDB, Kinesis data stream, Lambda function, all of that is being deployed with a, a single click. Since I've already deployed, I'm getting a message, no changes to deploy, deployment skipped, which completely makes sense. Now, let me show you the demo. This is really interesting to be honest. So I'm gonna create an item and I'm gonna say, hello. And truly, this is fascinating to me. Like this is happening real time, okay? Ready, three, two, one. So I have inserted the data into this table, right? Dynamo uh, table. What happens is now in near real time, it's gonna go to the stream, stream passes to the Lambda, and essentially what I wanna show you, and remember there's only one item. Uh, so if I query this again, uh, should be there in a couple of seconds. Guys, look at this, this is absolutely flawless. We got that somebody inserted into the data lake. So as soon as it was there, there was an insert in Dynamo, we near real time are streaming those events. And as you can see, year, month, day, um, of course we have the field, um, PKSK and the region and the metadata. This is flawless because think about it. Now your DynamoDB can have operational data and all these data can accumulate over the time in the data lake, 10 years, 20 years. You could load this data into a warehouse now, data warehouse, you can perform OLAP queries on this. So this architecture is absolutely flawless and works without any problem. Entire code with cloud formation and serverless is, is there in the description, which is called lab number 24. If you do enjoy these tutorials, please give a, a like and a, a simple comment saying that, hey, great job, would be really amazing because it takes a lot of effort to write code, to compile everything and compile in a short video for everyone. So a simple like and a share or a comment would really make my day. And uh, by the way, this is a flawless architecture, uh, widely adopted. We are also adopting this architecture at our company. Um, and here is the entire demo, uh, how it works. Again, all the infrastructure code is there. I have done all the heavy lifting for you. So all you have to do, download the lab, say serverless deploy and actually see yourself how things are working. Thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed uh, this video and I hope you have enjoyed this architecture, right? As soon as any item comes in, it essentially will broadcast those events to the data stream and then the lambdas are processing the data and then they are inserting into into, Kines, uh, into S3. I could have used a fire hose and then I could have used a lambda as a transformation, but there was no need. I could have just done this with a simple data stream and a lambda fire. That's it for this video. If you have downstream user who cares about the data, why not publish this data to SNS topic? So now downstream uh, basically user can subscribe to these events, right? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying all these amazing labs. And I bet you these are real world example you wouldn't find on your textbooks. These are the items that we or I have done in the company with my team. And I'm showing you every single thing with code. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming, keep learning. Uh, there's a saying, right? Knowledge is power. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.